Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow out of Diagnostics. We've got a pretty fresh new car here. A 2017 Kia Cadenza V6. About 118,000 miles. And the customer, he towed it from Virginia about five hours away because he's having problems with misfires, it's blowing smoke, it's burning oil apparently classic Hyundai Kia product uh, <laughs> so it's been to at least one other shop and they found that the spark plugs were coated with crud I mean they were fouled out and well let's you know, and then he said it stopped running. So we'll read the history. But right now I just want to scan it for codes. It actually drove in here just fine. It runs pretty smoothly. I was afraid it was going to be like a beached whale. But no. The codes that we're dealing with. So oxygen sensor heater, bank 1, sensor 1. Oxygen sensor heater, bank 2, sensor 1. Heater control circuit, bank 1, sensor 2. And then sensor pumping circ current circuit open, bank 2, sensor 1. Now you can see this one's present. These three are history, but um, I haven't started the car yet. So we'll look at live data real soon. Oil level. It's on the full mark, but man, that looks black. Like almost diluted with gas but that's typical for a GDI you definitely want to take a whiff under the oil cap it actually doesn't smell like raw gas in there which is good uh, let's read the customer complaint and take this diagnosis from scratch alright so this is what the customer sent me in the appointment form uh, I've been having an ongoing issue with the car sometimes blowing smoke and has a hollow rattling sound Happens under load, accelerating at low and accelerating at low speeds. Doesn't run smoothly as I think it should. Has a hesitation, and a little jerky at times. I've had the car about five months. Had the fuel injectors replaced because it was leaking fuel very bad. Could smell it. Okay, so I'm thinking the smoke issue didn't start until some sometime after replacing the fuel injectors. Hmm. Well, recently the last few weeks, the car pretty much stopped running. Had it towed, and the tow truck driver said it was running rich, and the spark plugs were probably fouled up, which was correct. The garage changed the spark plugs, and the smoke and rattling stopped, at least for a week, then started back again. Uh, I've also had the oxygen sensor replaced a couple of times. The codes keep coming back, I think. Check engine light is constantly on now. It was briefly off after changing the spark plugs. I really need to diagnose correctly. I've been getting so much contracting diagnosis, I don't know who to believe and trust. So, pretty common scenario for cars that come out of state. People are getting desperate and they want a guaranteed diagnosis. Even if the car is burning oil and I'm going to say, hey, it needs a new engine. Well, that's at least, <laughs> you know, uh, something they can work with. You know, the parts can here, it might fix it short term. Uh, I asked the owner, how much oil is a lot. He said it burns a lot of oil, like a quart every 500 miles. He said about two quarts every 500 miles. So this thing is drinking four quarts every thousand miles? That's insanity. I mean, remember that uh, hunted, haunted Hyundai uh, Santa Fe? With the, <laughs> with the timing code, it like, shared the pin, then cooked oxygen sensors, we have to replace the phaser. Then after that, it started eating injectors, like stuck open injectors, completely flooding out the cylinders. And then they cooked the new oxygen sensors again. These cars, honest to goodness, from my experience, are disposable. You get to 100,000 miles, your warranty's up, get rid of the stupid thing because it's going to turn into a giant money pit. Scotty Kilmer would probably agree. But anyways, let's... um. Jump in, do a cold start, see what the oxygen sensors do, look at the fuel trims, see if there are any misfires, take it on a test drive, 
and then get you know a feeling of where we're going with this thing. Okay, so first thing I want to do is actually clear the codes. Now you don't always want to do this, but you know the the codes are heater sent heater circuits and oxygen sensors so it's not like it's going to fix itself and then we have to give it like three drive cycles to make it act up again um, these are circuit codes so and some of them say history this car is a, a history of parts being replaced so I don't know how long it's been run after the oxygen sensor was replaced there's four sensors maybe only one was replaced who knows uh, so I want to start from scratch so let's do that just clear DTCs. Okay, so I got some OBD2 data pulled up before we start this engine. Coolant temp RPM, equivalence ratio, uh, bank one and bank two. Bank two is the front bank. So these have air fuel ratio sensors upstream. Long term trims and short term trims. These are about 10%, these are zero. We have oxygen sensor current, these are upstream for the air fuel ratio sensors and then the downstream voltages. So once we start it up cold, if the heaters are working fine, we should start seeing activity on all the sensors. Uh, you know, the downstreams might take a little while longer depending on the strategy. Sometimes cars wait to heat the downstreams up um, and then we'll take it for a test drive and see what's going on with our fuel trims and our sensors. All right, here we go. So it looks like Downstreams, the bias voltage is 1.2, so they, that's where they start. Um, let's back it out and see how long it takes for these things to heat up. So equivalence ratio. And yeah, the current's still zero. But look, short term on bank two started responding. And then it stopped responding. I wonder if we set a trouble code already. Well, let's watch the data for a little while. All right, it looks like both downstream sensors started working at exactly the same time. So that tells me that the heater, when that got turned on, now they're both downstreams are active. So that's good. Upstreams are still showing just zero, you know, Zero milliamps, short term is zero, long term is changing around, but let's get to the paved road and scan it for codes. Okay, so we're ready to go for, um, for a good acceleration. Since the upstream's not working, we can use the downstreams to see what the mixture is on both banks. And uh, we're going to use that to our advantage. Make sure they go rich and under full throttle. And then under fuel cut, they should go lean. Do we see any blue smoke behind us? Let's see if you guys can pick this up, but it's, it's foggy outside, so maybe it won't be very obvious. Though it's foggy outside, I, that was not just steam. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. Okay, so we just have two pending codes right now in OBD2. The 30, which is bank one sensor one heater control circuit, and then 2240 bank two sensor one positive current control circuit. So, we can look those two up, but if this thing is burning a quart every 250 miles, you know, what's the point of replacing oxygen sensors? It still drives, but kind of needs an engine, huh? Okay, let's do a quick check of the heater circuits on the upstream air-fuel ratio sensors. So, for bank one, it's setting the 0030 code for heater control circuit, and for bank 2 sensor 1, that's the front bank, it's setting a sensor pumping current circuit open, so not a heater. 
here's the wiring diagram, I printed that out. And bank two, which is the front bank, here's our sensor and the heater is right here. So it's powered up through the orange wire. We can measure the resistance from pin two to pin five, which is a white wire. So the sensor is right here and the plug is right here, very convenient. For bank one, red and gray. So pin two is red, yes. Pin five is gray, yes, so it's a six wire. You can actually unplug, unplug it. This actually looks pretty new. Look at how clean everything is. Okay, very interesting findings here. So on this bank two, the one that wasn't setting a circuit code, it was just setting a you know pumping, like not the heater code. So the heater on this one should be okay. Let's measure the resistance across those two middle pins. About seven ohms. Okay, 7.8 ohms. That's that's reasonable. So according to Ohm's law, V equals IR, and voltage is 12, battery voltage. The current would be about 2 amps at 6 ohms of resistance. But they're duty cycled, so probably draws about 1 amp to keep these sensors nice and hot. Let's measure the resistance on bank 1. Bank 1, sensor 1, this one that looks like it's been replaced. Guys, open circuit. Infinity. Computer's not lying. This, what it looks like, a fresh, brand new sensor is junk. Now, I don't know how to tell OEM from non-OEM. I'm going to take a look at the sensor body and see if it's some crappy brand. So it needs two upstream air fuel ratio sensors at the moment. That one, the heater's burnt out, and this one, well, the sensor is just, you know, due for replacement from age and oil burning. So I'll quote the customer, two upstream sensors, an oil change, you might try 10W30 to slow down the oil burning a little bit, and then I'm going to tell them, hey man, this is a ticking time bomb. Might need an engine soon. I mean, it'll start burning exhaust valves at that rate. If you're burning that much oil, engine does not have very long to live. So we'll see if the customer wants to do that. Pop a couple sensors in, oil change, and ship this thing down the road. All right, back to the Kia Cadenza. Rock Auto delivered us some goodies. Two NTK air fuel ratio sensors. Made in Spain. Okay. So I pulled both upstreams out and here's what they look like. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> so the front bank, the one that was setting a, whatever, just a signal code, well, it's missing the cap on the sensor. This one was setting the heater code. Electrically, the heater's burnt out and it's all black. So, yeah, definitely definitely need to be replaced. So here's a brand new one. Again, NTK. Looks like the same same part number there. And the connector should be identical. I checked the connectors, they're both the same. So let's uh, pop it in. Um, since this is missing, I want to look inside there with a bore scope inside the cat to make sure there's it's not just loose in there. You know, the customer said there's some jingling sound. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a peek in there. So I don't see anything crazy in the converter. Now some of the honeycomb is, uh, might be slightly plugged up, but this thing's an oil burner. Keep that in mind. What is that spot right there? Yep, 
Ooh, is that a chunk missing out of it? Hmm. Well, I don't see uh, any remains of that oxygen sensor, so like I said, I don't know what happened to it. But we're going to install it, clear the codes, and ship this thing down the road. All right, let's clear the DTCs here. All right, great news. We got current readings on the air fuel ratio sensors. Lambda is about stoichiometric. There's long term, short term. Oil is fresh. I changed the oil and filter. Let's take this thing for a spin and see if it blows any smoke. Otherwise, it's ready to return to the customer. All right, I'm going to look in the mirror for if you can do a cloud of smoke or not. Let's floor it. Not terrible. I don't know, there might be something there. But it runs great. Fuel trims are appropriate. Like under 10% total. So I think the customer should be pleased with that. Just needed two air fuel ratio sensors and an oil change. And he'll keep keep me posted how much oil this thing's using. I'm really curious, you know, if it's really a quart every 250 miles, I mean that that'd be like blue smoke all the time. <laughs> but still has some miles left in it. So appreciate everyone watching. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. All right, so update on the Kia Cadenza with the broken upstream air fuel ratio sensors. New sensors work great, but I wanted to make sure that all the OBD2 monitors passed before giving the car back to the customer. Because this is a long distance customer from whatever, six to eight hours away down in Virginia. So I'll go the extra mile and make sure there are no surprises once they pick it up. Let's uh, jump inside and take a look at the scanner. Okay, so in the OBD2 menu, first I want to check that all the monitors have passed. So since DTC is cleared, see, ready, 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 not supported, ready, not supported, ready, ready, ready. So everything is ready that the car you know, is able to run. That's good. So it took three test drives, two cold start uh, total test drives, a 10 mile loop to get all the monitors to pass. Now yes, that takes time and in some cases with stubborn cars you you should charge for that time. I mean it was what, over half an hour of driving just to set these monitors. Um, any codes? Well the check engine lights off. You think you're out of the you know out of the woods but Read fault code. Bum, bum, bum. P0430 catalyst efficiency bank 2 pending. What does that mean? That means on the next trip when it runs this monitor and if it fails it will turn on the check engine light. So how would you feel as a customer if you just picked your car up, it's running great, um, supposedly fixed and then on your trip home the check engine light comes on. That would be a kind of a big disappointment. So our jobs as technicians is to tell the customer, hey, your check engine light is guaranteed to come on on your drive home. But, you know, it's not nothing drivability related. It's just that your catalyst has lost efficiency due to the oil burning, due to the oxygen sensor that fell apart. And there's, you know, we saw with the borescope that there's like a little chunk melted out of the cat. So not surprising, the Bank 2 cat has been compromised. Now, if they're in a state where they don't care about the emissions inspection or the check engine light, you know, that's fine. That's totally up to the customer. But 
you have to be upfront so there are no surprises right communication is absolutely key in cases like this so I'll tell them that um, also I'm going to ask them to monitor the exact fuel consumption so I filled this thing with 10 W30 synthetic and it calls for a 5 W30 synthetic just to try to slow down this excessive oil consumption so I tell them in 500 miles check the dipstick and see are you down a quart are you down you know halfway that way he'll establish a baseline and add oil on time is there any way to fix that without replacing the engine or tearing it all apart and replacing piston rings we might have a way to do that I just saw a video on Bernie Thompson's channel ATS uh, automotive um, solutions and he has this chemical called CRO 505 it's a strong carbon dissolver uh, you pour it right into the engine oil I think uh, you run at a high idle for 20 minutes and if you saw that video like, I've tried several products top-end engine cleaners um, no, I haven't tried sea foam I mean that's that just creates a lot of smoke but <laughs> apparently this stuff he's he claims that it unsticks piston rings that would be huge because I see quite a few cars that are oil burners Hyundai's some like 2013-14 Subarus my own 98 Toyota Camry over there that again was neglected and my old Mazda van under a cover here that's an excessive oil burner so we'll do some experiments with Bernie's magic uh, chemical treatment and to see if it really works as well as he claims it's I paid 300 bucks for 12 cans of this stuff so you need one can per treatment and we'll see but to offer that to your customers if I know it works I can you know say hey let's try this there's really nothing to lose all you need is a treatment and you know a can of this stuff and then an oil change and uh, it might save some engines it might save some premature like burnt exhaust valve problems fouled spark plugs uh, degraded catalyst you know catalytic converters so we'll try that out I'm pretty excited um, but thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye bye